Hello! Are you new to Warhammer Total War and maybe Immortal Empires and you don't really understand how magic works? Well, in this video I'm gonna try to explain it as well as I can to new players that have never used like Winds of Magic and magic in a Total War game before. So, first off, uh, this is on the campaign map. Here you have a little bar which says how much Winds of Magic power reserve you have. Usually this goes up to a maximum of 100, but you can do certain things that will influence it more, or I can also go below. Uh, but I have another uh, video on my channel where I tell you how to manipulate how to get more than 100. So if you want to watch that, then go and watch that. But this is uh, the reserves when you go into battle. You can, for example, start off with 20 Winds of Magic. If you have a full bar, then you will have basically 120 Winds of Magic that you will be able to use in that battle. Unless you have certain items that gives you extra Winds of Magic power reserve, which this is uh, called. And you have very many different spell lores, as you can see here. Uh, this video would be too long if I actually go through all of them. But in pretty much all of the lores you have damage spells, like for example in Lore of Vampires, uh, Wind of Death, that's a favorite spell of very many. Because it does a lot of damage, and if you see here you can upgrade it, so if you double click on it in, uh, in battle, you will have the uh, possibility to upgrade it, or overcast it as it is called. And you can see here damage per second, it goes up significantly so with this spell you pretty much always want to overcast it and you want to use it against infantry because it will just wipe out a complete unit or up to like four units if they are in a line or something or if you blob up and create like a blob of uh, enemy infantry on top of each other and use this overcast it you will just wipe them all out so this is a really really good uh, damage spell but you also have buffing spells, uh, like Van Hel's Dance Macabre, for example, which gives speed and melee attack. Uh, this is only for one unit, but if you upgrade it or overcast it, uh, you will uh, be able to cast it in an area. But uh, be wary, because if you do overcast it, it will cost more Winds of Magic. So you can see here, it goes from 4 to 8. With Winds of Death, it goes from 15 to 20. So you have to uh, kind of think about, is it worth it to overcast? With a spell like Wind of Death, you get so much more damage from 24 to 72. That is like f almost four times as much for only five more Winds of Magic. So it's pretty much always worth to overcast. But with this, for example, it goes from four to eight Winds of Magic, which is, you know, double and you only get uh, an area of effect. So this is only good if you have a certain army which is more about just attacking, like melee units that just want to rip through the enemies, but uh, the Vampire Counts doesn't really have that, um, that great soldiers, so this spell isn't that good. But also, miscast chance is another thing you have to worry about when overcasting, because as you can see here, when you overcast it, you will get a 50% miscast chance. This only means that if you overcast and you actually miscast, then your caster, your lord or hero that casts the spell, will take some damage. So it's not a really big deal, but you have to worry about it if you are low on health, for example. So uh, that's why you wouldn't overcast every spell all the time. Uh, you also have spells like Raising the Dead, or like Summoning Units. For example, Lord of the Wild can summon a Saigor. And uh, Skaven... Which one is it? Is it the Ruin one? Uh, no, the Plague one. Here you can summon uh, Clan Rats. And you can summon Plague Monks. So a lot of, sp uh, a lot of lores. Uh, have the ability to summon units, summon rotting Prometheans, for example. 
and you also have debuffs so with this one for example fog of the damned this is a hex which means it affects enemy units and it's an area so effect range area 35 meters that is usually around two or three units in a line uh, so just how just so you know approximately how much that is and if you overcast it it goes from 24 to 40 negative melee attack on the units so this can be good if you don't have another spell that's better for example or if you really need to eliminate the potential of some enemy units for example if you have regular let's say marauders or swordsmen some early game units that's not that good and you're going up against i don't know sword masters or you know something with a high melee attack for example then this could be really good you know or a, a spell that's like this um actually this lore of magic has my favorite spell which is Van Geist's Revenge and you can see here if you regular cast it it does 72 damage which is the same as a Wind of Death upgraded actually and if you upgrade it you get 108 so this will just blast through any infantry unit and uh, it's got the best animation in the game if you ask me that's just a side note just look at this it summons a goddamn ship and just annihilates a unit trust me try it out have fun uh, but yeah other than that you have spells which have contact effects like kraken's pull for example uh, which reduces speed for enemy affected units by 45 percent uh, tide call it uh, reduces speed by 25 percent lore of ice um, i think this one yeah gives frostbite uh, it reduces speed by 30% and yeah there are several like this I can't remember them all right now uh, and you have some spell that are bombardment spells like Comet of Casadora for example these are very easy to dodge if you are trying to cast them when the enemy is just walking or running around so you really want to pin the enemy down uh, preferably in kind of a blob in like a circular circular position I mean the enemy is in a circular position because this is kind of a circular spell when it hits and then it will do massive massive damage as you can see here so this is like a high risk high reward well not really high risk but you risk wasting the winds of magic that's all but you really want to pin the enemy in place before trying to do bombardment spells. Uh, Lore of Metal, for example, has Searing Doom. Uh, it's also a bombardment spell, not as powerful as Comet of Casadora. But you really want to pin enemies down before you try to use bombardment spells, or they will just um, run out of the way. And you got kind of um, different spells like buffing spells which are called augments um, yeah explosion spells like this kind of explodes in an area after a period of time so there are a vast amount of different types of spell you can just experiment with them on your own this one is a direct damage same as spirit leech for example you just uh, press a certain enemy and you will do some damage over time so yeah just experiment with the different spells and you will see what is best and you will probably find your favorite one uh, so let's go into battle and see how it actually works all right so this is a battle with my legendary lord Belagor. and if you have a magic caster uh, a hero or a lord that have uh, a the ability to cast magic you will get this in the start of the battle so you can risk magic for more favorable wins so the amount you start with is based on how much your power reserve on the campaign map is so like right now i have power reserve 102 which is almost the maximum i can have 105 right now so this will be at around 20 plus minus 4 i think 
So, if you want to get more starting Winds of Magic, you will have to get, um, or you will have to fill up your power reserve. And here we can channel magic, trying to get more, but can also get less, or you can just start the planet. So, just for the sake of this video, I'm gonna try to channel. And look at that, I actually get 7. So that, that is pretty lucky, actually. Uh, but that can also go the wrong way, so I usually don't do it. And then you can see right now my spells are not here, even though I have pressed Pelacor. But if I, tri if I press start deployment, the spells appear. So Pelacor is like the master of shadow, so his shadow spells are actually super cheap. So that's why he is so damn good. So I'm actually gonna do this battle just with him, yes. <laughs> just to see, or just to show you how strong magic can be. So Pit of Shades is a really good vortex spell, and since I have reduced it with like 40% cost or something like that, I can just cast it willy-nilly. So there you go, takes a little bit to cast, and then it like absorbs them up into the air, throws them down, and does a fair amount of damage. 5 damage per second per entity, meaning every model, every like every soldier, for 13 seconds. And you can see the radius is 15 meters, so pretty much just big enough to hit one unit, or if they're clumped up you can of course hit more. The range, 200 meters, that shows how far away I can cast it. So you can see I can cast it all the way over there, and if it's red that means I am out of range. If I cast it here now, you can see that I'm gonna hit both of these units and it will do a lot of damage. pretty much annihilating these two units here. There we go. Here I have a uh, direct damage spell. It only costs three wins of magic because of Bellacor's, um like reduced wins of magic cost. But it's not a really great spell, so I'm not gonna use that. And we have a Hex, the Nibbling Foe, if I upgrade it, I actually don't have the um, the extra skill point that you have to get in order to upgrade it. Uh, but if you right click on any of these spells, you come right into this, so here I can see what it does if I upgrade. Okay, extended uh, effect duration, so it goes from 17 seconds to 34 seconds, so it, it lasts uh, twice as long. For only four more wins of magic so uh, mathematically it is worth it but is it worth it in a battle that's what you have to decide for yourself i usually prefer the damage spells because they usually add the most benefit but sometimes hexes or augments can be really really efficient so if you're new to the game just have to try and see what works best for you really uh, the penum Penumbral Pendulum, that's another damage spell, which is a wind, so you can see I can cast it like this and we go that direction. But if I press here, for example, and I drag my mouse that way, then I can actually shift which way it will go. This is something they added in Warhammer 2, and uh, I think pretty much everyone loves that addition. <laughs> okay, maybe I should uh, try not to die here. So yeah, those are the um, the hexes that I have, and of course the uh, the spells have a cooldown. As you can see right now, um, the green shows how long the spell lasts, and after that it will be a red like light going around showing the cooldown, but. Because of uh, Bellacor's special skill, uh, it reduces cooldown by like 30% plus some additional you get from the uh, like spell uh, spell skills as well. So 
I can actually cast with no cooldown with Bellacor, which is pretty unique. But usually there's like a 30 second cooldown or something like that. That's the most um, normal. And some some lords and some heroes are more proficient magic casters. Lords are always better than heroes. Uh, and there are some legendary lords that are very good, like Elakor is one of them, Techless, um, what's it called, Balthazar, Gel. Yeah, you, have, you have a few of the really good sorcerers. So if you want to try out magic and really become good at it or knowledgeable, you could try one of those. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for how to use it in battle. Like I said, usually you want to use damage spells because it usually gives you the most value for your Winds of Magic. Uh, oh right, uh, if you hover over this like hourglass, you can see how much power Winds of Magic that is. Uh, I have right now, and you can see the power reserve, meaning how much I have left. So I have 15 right now, or 16 right now, plus 31, so that is like... 47 so I have 47 in total in this battle right now so after I have used up all of those 47 then I don't have any more wins of magic in this battle but it will reset for you know the next battle and you can see recharge modifier effects arcane conduit that is a skill that every sorcerer both lord and hero can get some actually get greater arcane conduit which is better and you can get some other skills and traits as well that will have the same effect but you can see plus 40 percent that just means that instead of recharging one power per nine seconds which is the um, like normal i get it one per seven seconds or one per six seconds so it just reduces the time it takes for winds of magic to like come from, I don't know, the pool, the pool of magic into your, what should we call it, the hourglass or basically that how it goes from not being able to be used to be used. Let's just call it that. So that's pretty much all you need to know about magic in, um, in a battle and I'll show you some of the skills that that your characters can actually put into when it comes to magic. Because it's different of course for lords and for heroes. And all the different lords have a like passive spell, you can call it that. Or a, spe uh, a passive effect. So with shadow, the shadow magic is what Belakor uses. That one gives speed to all of your units when you are casting. So yeah, I guess I should say that the passive only applies when you are casting. So um, yeah, let me just load through this battle. As you can see, 489 kills and I didn't have to use any of, well, the hell cannon helped, <laughs> but None of my other units even contributed, and even if I wanted to, I could have healed him back up with his special ability, but this is just to show you the magic. So, let's go into the skill line. Uh, here you can see the passive ability, Smoke and Mirrors, which gives 10% speed to all units for 24 seconds, and it will enable if you are casting. So, you can cast every 24 seconds for example to maximize this effect but I wouldn't really think about it too much just it's a nice bonus to get uh, some some of these passive abilities are really great some are very meh so they they vary from um, lore uh, magic lore to magic lore and of course you can put in points into the spells so if I want to be able to upgrade or overcast the enabling foe, I have to put one skill into this. 
And if I put in another skill point, I will reduce the Winds of Magic cost. It costs to, to um, regular cast it. And for how much it costs to upgrade cast it. And it also reduces the miscast base chance. So if I put in another point here, it will only be 35% miscast chance instead of 50%. So that is good for, uh, for example, Pit of Shades, which I might want to overcast. And then I, I want to reduce the uh, potential for actually harming my own Lord by casting spells. And you can also reduce it with another 15% here. So then it will go down to uh, 20% if I, my math is correct. And here is the Arcane Conduit uh, skill. So I hope that is clarifying to new players. That is pretty much all you have to know as a basic and uh, basic knowledge for magic in Warhammer. Um, well, Total War Warhammer, both 1, 2 and 3. I have made some changes to the magic system through the games, but this is what we have to work with right now. And I think is probably the best uh, out of all three games, even though it is way less exploitable than it was in the second game. But you know, everyone to uh, <laughs> themselves there. So I hope this was clarify clarifying and that you learned something. Please leave a comment if uh, there's something else you need help with, if there is something else you think I should have mentioned in this video. And I can of course make a second video if you want. Uh, and please leave a comment if you want me to go through the different lores, uh, the different lores of magic, to say, for example, wh which spells are good, which spells are efficient, which spells should you basically never cast. Uh, I could make some videos about that if there is interest for it. So please let me know in the comments below. Alright, that is everything. I hope you guys had uh, fun and learned something and bye-bye.